Alrighty, Mr. Gate Keeper, Northeast Georgia here. Whoo wee, as I wipe the sweat off my brow. You're probably wondering where in the world, what did all these parts come from? Where did all these parts come from? <laughs> what amp did all these come out of? Goodness gracious. Well, this cotton jobber. All right, I am going to call this a, not only a complete rebuild pretty much, but a metamorphosis. <laughs> I think I'm, that's what I might title this, the, uh, the metamorphosis. Don't really know what to call it. This is, uh. Palomar 550, Palomar 500, Palomar 600, Palomar 650, a Boomer 600. And yeah, there might be one or two other, but they're all identical. I got about three or four of them over there in the junk pile. And, um, but this is, I believe, the newest version, and it has nothing on the front. Let me turn that off. Let me see a little better. The rumor is, I don't know if it's completely true, but someone that used to work for Palomar purchased a, uh, a pretty big bulk of the cases and uh, pretty much just got blanks uh, silk screening done and constructed his own and used 1446s instead of the uh, SRF uh, 3749s, 454s, 455s. He used uh, 1446s. I've seen quite a few of these. I actually own one myself that I converted to a straight. So, um, so anyway, this came to me having a uh, problem of the uh, output resistor pretty much blowing, getting hot instantly. The uh, preamp button wasn't working. And the... No, there wasn't nothing wrong with the keying. Basically, it, it just was not making watts. I mean, about the only thing I could get out of was about 200 watts. So we went ahead and went in this thing, man, and just done a complete metamorphosis, man. I have spent about four days on this thing, way longer than I should have. And we're just going to kind of just go in a line and just kind of explain, you know, quick as I can, everything that's been done because there's been a lot of things done. Pretty much uh, trying to figure out the issue. This 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 whole board has been out of this case three separate times, three separate times. Okay, until I finally figured out what it was. Sometimes you just come to that with an amp. You cannot figure out what's causing the problem, and you pretty much just have to go in hit or miss mode, which means you just start. You go in a line of priority and start replacing parts. If anybody out there didn't. It's a technician or, you know, a radio technician. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You just kind of have to just start replacing parts till you hit it. And then you write it down for future use and you just learn something. And I did dang sure learn something from this. I'm going to be going back to my old, my, my three or four other ones here soon and probably getting them up and rolling because I think about two of them got the same issue. Um... To start from the top, I did a full Class C conversion. As you can see over here, you got the sandbar resistors, stabilization caps. Okay, went ahead and um, converted it to a straight Class C. Okay, went ahead and did our ground in here. For the input transformer, we took the 10 ohm off. That's how it was being uh, granted for AB1 before. And we just did, went ahead and did a straight ground. Okay. <clears throat> um, I kind of just started my way from the back. Actually, I'm going to start my way from the back and work my way up. I took both the SO239s out and put brand new ones in. Because they were having a problem making connections sometimes. 
So I just went ahead and replaced them. Okay. The out, let me get something to point with here, y'all. Get some plastic. All right. The output cap. I never agree with the size that you like to use with these. So pretty much I just put a size about, uh, about three times the size. This is the size they had on there. Okay. And that's the size that was on there. So I just replaced that with a bigger 100 picofarad. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and explain this too. So that any other people having problems with this amp, because I have noticed this, is ha this has been a problem with a lot of amps. Okay. When somebody blows a pill with this amp, a lot of times a 10 ohm is going to go, and a lot of times this output resistors okay by factory they use two 200 ohms which equals 100 ohms in parallel and nine times out of ten they go as well when you blow a pill or pills transistors all right what a person normally does without taking this case the whole case uh, board out is they'll pop the resistor out resistors out and they'll start soldering a new one in. And sometimes when they do that, the uh, the combiner, the two wires from the combiner will come up. And they'll have to solder them back in. All right. Those two solder pads have three holes in them. All right. Two for two, but one, each of the resistors, one for the le uh, wire from the combiner. Whenever you begin to put solder on that pad, it starts seeping through those holes to the bottom. Here's the problem. On beneath the board on the bottom, each of the wires from each transformer is soldered underneath to that pad. So when you apply that solder, apply that heat, it starts seeping through. And guess what happens? The wire that's soldered to that slowly goes down and touches the heat sink. There's the problem. Okay, and that's what the problem was with this amplifier right here somebody had re already replaced this with a with a um with, with they, they actually replaced it with two 200 ohms but i like to just go ahead and replace it with a five watt 100 ohm i mean i could go with a three but uh you know it's, it's just my style i ain't trying to hide nothing it's just my style that's just what i've gripped on to and i just you know replaced the two with a 100 on five watt i notice a lot of other people do that with these amps too from now on what i'm personally going to do I ain't you know there ain't no secrets this is a hobby to me you know it's something i love to do i'm just going to go ahead and insulate the heat sink and just be done with it every every box that comes to me like this i'm going to take the whole case i'm going to take the board out and i'm going to insulate the heat sink and that right there will just you know for one thing, to kind of help you with this, do not apply a lot of heat. Turn your gun down a little bit when you're soldering on these two pads and on these two pads. You can't see them right now, but once you take this 100 ohm right here up, there's a pad right here and a pad right here. That, that solder a leg of the resistor, that leg of the resistor is two pads. Just don't apply a lot of heat to them. Get in and get out quick as you can. Or because if you stay in there, that solder is going to be seeping through, and that wire that's soldered up underneath is just going to slowly go with the solder and just literally rest on the heat sink. And you don't want that. You do not want that. All right. I did not figure that out quickly. So before all that, I began replacing a couple of parts. Excuse me. All right. With these particular amps, sorry, I'm moving this around a whole lot. With, with these particular amps, they have um, 100 ohm, uh, excuse me, 100 picofarad caps from each transformer to ground. These right here. And I don't know why, but on each one, the legs are just very long. And they do the same with the 10 ohms. The 10 ohms are just very long. Like they just took them out to package and just solder them quickly I, I really don't know what's up with that but a rule of thumb shortest leads possible 
the more leads you have, the more stray capacitance could, you can have. You just want your leads to be as short as possible when you're dealing with RF. So I took them all out and they all did not match. That could be that could be due to some problems in the future. I mean, some problems in the past. I'm getting all the words wrong today. Some problems in the past that somebody had with, you know, a two pill section running a little bit hotter than the other two pill section. We're just putting a lot of strain on them and, and whatever. I'm not going to, I got to hurry up with this. I got about eight minutes left, so I ain't going to get into a deep explanation because there's a lot of things I did with this amp. But anyway, I just went ahead and put uh, four fresh new 100s, okay? Another thing is, is I really do not know why, but they never put feedback circuits on these amps, but they'll put one on the driver. I have no idea why they do that. What I always like to do is just go ahead and throw them feedback circuits in. That's going to help keep your amplifier balanced. It's going to help keep your, it's going to also help your amplifier to not oscillate as easy when you're doing all that overdriving and all that kind of stuff right there, okay? I went ahead and took the uh, two, one, uh, two 200 ohms off here on the input splitter. See, this is a splitter, this is a combiner. This splits to these two, this combines these two. And I just went ahead and uh, replaced that with a 100 ohm, okay? Transistors have been in and out of here probably about four or five times, man, when I was trying to figure out what was going on with all this. So we got uh, f uh, max transistors in. They're a little, they're a little weaker on the HFV value. That's, that's just, you know, it's not, that's not uncommon. They've just been used, you know, used real well. The more you use the transistor, the more, you know, they're going to get slowly weaker. The HFV value is going to get lesser and lesser. Okay. One more thing I forgot to exp uh, tell you. Back here in the back, they have five sixties on here. I went ahead and tried something a little new with this since we went ahead and class seed it. I went ahead and put one thousands on the back here. And I also took these off, these little, little puny little, I don't know what gauge that is, but they're on the back uh, power in the transformers, which I'm sure is purely, you know, I'm sure it's, it's perfect. You know, it, it, it gives it what it needs, but just to make me feel better, I went ahead and put two chokes of some real good 14 gauge wire, man. I mean, this thing is, is good to go, man. 14 gauge wire. Just added a couple more filter caps. You see these yellow caps, just filter caps on the hot bus. Okay, another thing I went ahead and did is this power is relying on, you know, almost aluminum foil, pretty much, copper foil to pass the power from here all the way to the driver. So what I went ahead and did is put some thick solder on the whole hot bus. The hot bus starts back here. Goes right here and then down here to the driver. Went ahead and thickened that up with some good solder. I do that on all of these, man. Just makes me feel better. Went and threw some more filter caps right there. No big deal. Okay. Every single cap in here has been replaced but these, the inputs. I took those off, checked them. They were actually sitting exactly like at 303 Pika Ferry. Good to go. Let them stay. All right. Next thing I did. I took both trimmers out of this amp. Now, this is a big deal. I took both trimmers out of this amp and mic them in. Now, it is not uncommon for somebody to get in here and start turning these trimmers, man. I mean, it's not uncommon. I mean, it happens all the time. Somebody feels they can get their a little bit more power out of their amp. Hey, I don't blame you, man. I mean, this is, this is, this is what it's supposed to be about, fun. Toy around, play around, test, you know, results. That's what it's all about. But somebody that's not as experienced gets in here and starts, you know, turning these trimmers and gets the whole amp out of whack. Uh, or makes them show more watts on the PEP, but this put in more harmonics, blows a pill, you know, this and that, this and that. So basically, every time I get an amp like this, most of the time I'll just retune the amp, okay? But, if it's doing the watts really well, I'll just leave it be. I will check that first. But with this right here, I just had to go ahead and retune the amp. Right here, there was one, that tremor, and here in the front. And you see this cap right here. So I went ahead and retuned them in and mic them in. Okay. Next. I don't know what's up with this design, but there's not a cap on the transformer or one going to ground. 
Went ahead and did a little test and it came out very well. Went ahead and added a 1,000 right here. I want another 100 right here, same as they got right here, okay? And all that is is to the transformer to ground, same as it is over here, okay? Went ahead and added another choke, for, uh, 16 gauge wire right here, going to the transformer to power it. All right. Next thing, real quick, as you see, uh, went ahead and took all the chokes off for the AB bias, took both sandbars out, da da da. So this, this amp now can be ran on volts. Not a lot, still got a driver in it. All right, next thing, we got to hurry up here. Just to be cost effective, they don't use Teflon wires, okay? As you see, all these wires right here. When, I, when you get in there with your iron and get close to them and get to melting them and, you know, like I did right here by accident, melted the wire, we all do it. Don't that look so much cleaner just to replace it with some good Teflon wire. This wire is actually the same gauge as that wire, but the insulation is not as thick, but it's Teflon. So that makes it look so much cleaner. Next, I replaced the LEDs with blue. This is my thing I like to do. <laughs> Trying to rhyme up in here. I had to replace the uh, the switch for the preamp. All right, next thing is I went ahead and totally redid the high low medium switch. Okay, it no longer corresponds with low high medium on the front. Okay, low is now high. Low is now high. High is low and medium is medium, I believe it is. Okay, we'll check that out, but I believe that's what it is. And I went ahead and totally redid the network here, okay? As you see right down here, if anybody's ever wanting to know how to do this mod, you can pretty much just call this a mod. The RF is now flowing through these resistors in series, okay? So it's, it's, it's going to be affecting it way better. Basically, where the RF comes to the input transformer right here, it's kind of hard to see. I took a Dremel and I slid it in half, okay? So now we have two right here. Run a wire from here on in, you know, each as its own to the resistors. It comes back out on the other side, okay? So I've now created that. You could also put a variable, but it'd be kind of hard to fit a variable make it look good right there. So I redid the input, high-low, medium, now it's a lot more effective now instead of it being shunted to ground because it just is not as effective to it now once you do a class c because there's no b plus bias in in this actual with the signal if that makes sense all right let's go ahead and uh, i think i covered everything let's go ahead and see what what it's doing because i don't got much time oh, man we don't got no time left at all y'all i'm just gonna hit it on the high y'all and let y'all see real quick all right No, ah, y'all send seven hundred and twelve. All right, let me let let y'all see the bird real quick here. Oh yeah. 